You know, Gordon Wang, the foreign minister, he rebuffed Blinken and he ridiculed Washington. How would you characterize the Chinese stance? The Chinese stance is unrelenting hostility. And whether we're talking about a spy balloon or anything else, this is China's stance. It does this almost every single day with hostility in its propaganda. And we Americans are not paying attention to this. In May 2019, they even declared a quote unquote people's war on us. And, and we decided that it wasn't really big deal. So really what we've got to do is understand what the Chinese say and listen to what they say. Because as James Lilly, a American ambassador to Beijing said, the Chinese always telegraph their punches. They're doing this, Eric, to establish a justification to strike America. To strike America, not just potentially Taiwan? Yes. I mean, clearly what we saw was a balloon that went over our most sensitive military sites. This was Maelstrom, F.E. Warren, Minot, Offutt, and Whiteman Air Force bases, where we have our nuclear deterrent. Matter of fact, Offutt Air Force Base is the home of U.S. Strategic Command, which controls all nuclear weapons. So the um, the conclusion is be must be that they are planning a first or second strike on the United States with their most destructive weapons. Uh, you know, Gordon, that seems very alarming when you talk about a first strike uh, with nuclear weapons from China. Uh, you know, first of all, why would they do that? Second of all, how can we prevent that? Well, they threaten to do that because they don't want us to intervene if they attack Taiwan, Japan, Philippines, or whatever. They saw that Vladimir Putin's nuke threats have been working in Ukraine because we have been hesitant to support the endangered republic there. And so has NATO. Um, so they can see it worked. And after that, we heard uh, nuke threats from both China and North Korea. So I think that they do intend to make those threats to use their nuclear weapons um, before or shortly after invading. And speaking of Ukraine, uh, Beijing apparently may start supplying lethal aid to Vladimir Putin for this horrendous invasion and the catastrophe that he has caused. Uh, what will that do and how will that ramp up the tensions if Beijing does jump in? Well, Beijing has already jumped in. Uh, from the very beginning of this war, China has been supplying military assistance. There was the location data that uh, China obtained because Ukraine was using Chinese-made drones. They fed that to the Russians so the Russians could take out the Ukrainian drone operators. There's this report that uh, DJI, the uh, Chinese drone maker, has supplied uh, drones to the Wagner Group of Russia, which is involved in the war. China's been involved in helping Russia across the board, whether we're talking about elevated commodity purchases to support and essentially finance the Russian war effort, or we're talking about diplomatic or propaganda support. And this administration keeps on issuing warnings to China, and China keeps ignoring them. So, of course, the Chinese are going to continue to supply military assistance. We need to stop issuing hollow warnings and imposing costs on China for clearly being on Russia's side in the Ukraine war. What type of uh, uh, price do you think that they should pay? What should we start doing? We just heard Nikki Haley uh, in a soundbite a moment ago say that we need to be more aggressive in dealing with China. What would you suggest? I, I suggest cutting relations across the board. Our, our response, and there's a menu of stuff we can do, whether it's trade, investment, technical assistance, cooperation agreements that we have with, uh, with China, we should just start cutting this, and it should be disproportionate. American policymakers for decades have loved the idea of proportionate responses because they think, well, that avoids escalation. But, you know, those policies have not worked, and we need to imp impress upon the Chinese that we're serious in defending our allies, our friends, and the United States, because so far, the Chinese don't think we're going to protect ourselves. Yeah, and finally, Gordon, I mean, it, clearly the Chinese lie. I mean, Beijing is just full of it. L look what the spokesman uh, for the government has uh, tweeted out about uh, Ukraine. Quote, China is not a party to the Ukraine crisis, but we have not sat idly by or added fuel to the fire. Everything China has done is aimed at facilitating peace through dialogue. Going on to say, for a safer world, the sovereignty and to territorial integrity of all countries must be respected. The principle of sovereignty is the cornerstone of the contemporary international order. Talk about two-faced sovereignty when they send balloons over us. There's no question about it. And, and uh, China obviously doesn't want Ukraine to protect its own sovereignty. You know, China actually greenlighted the Ukraine invasion. And that's evident from the 5,300-word joint statement 
that China and Russia issued on February 4th, just 20 days before Russia's invasion. That's when China and Russia declared their no limits partnership. And the Biden administration sees all that China is doing to support Russia and doesn't do anything. So yes, the Chinese will continue to be on the other side and they'll be there until we impose whatever cost. I'd love to cut trade. I'd love to cut investment. I'd love to cut technical cooperation. I'd love to cut their to close their four consulates in the U.S. Mm. We just need to cut back and show China that we're serious.